are you thinking about suicide? Dear brother or sister, if you are considering leaving this earth, I would like to talk to you before you go. I know the pain of this life as well, and I once tried to take my life. What I want to say to you is what I wish someone was there to say to me then. But it seems like nobody is there for us really, doesn't it? I remember how alone I felt. I could see no way out. My prison was addiction. I don't know what yours is. What I do know is that time proves that prisons are illusory and that sometimes a key will appear and it becomes possible to change. Even real prison doors open in time. Everything changes, you know. There is nothing that cannot change, even if it seems to last forever. Every thought, every cell, every moment, every day, every passing star, even the sun changes all the time, and even the sun must die. So the feeling, the situation, the addiction or problem that seems endless is really not. The natural law, the one law you can rely on is change and impermanence. This too shall pass. Think of your life, the passing feelings and seasons the sorrows, the joys and the long nights. Nights pass, the stars fade at dawn as the light returns. Winters eventually thaw, and what seems dead begins to shoot new life as warmth and green buds return, with the flowers and the butterflies. Mother Nature shows us the way again and again. You can decide to believe in God, or Great Spirit, or the Tao, or nothing at all. What we know for sure is that there is a great mystery. Here we are, hurtling through the void on a spinning blue and green ball, which spins around a massive ball of light, which spins around the hub of the galaxy in one of its swirling arms, as the galaxy itself drifts through the void, a timeless, limitless cosmos. What is true is that we are here now, in this beautiful world. We've been gifted with this life, this awareness, and this chance to awaken. We have this chance to create a world in which men cease to do so much harm, a world in which love is the law. I believe now that I suffered such darkness so that I could be prepared to know the light. Such suffering brings so many gifts, the gifts of the open heart and the gifts of compassion. We need to treat ourselves so kindly, especially now, to learn to hold ourselves in our pain. Now you know how dark the day can get, you are becoming ready to be the one who can hold someone else as they suffer. You braved the fire, stared into the abyss, and so far you have survived. You can learn to hold space for your pain, and this allows you to hold space for others. Not with cheap fixes or platitudes or borrowed wisdom, but with the blazing fires of suffering etched in your heart. And with that beautiful heart blazing with the wish that you and they and all life can be free from suffering. I longed to be free from suffering, free from my addiction, free from the incessant judgments and criticisms of my own mind, the endless shame and the stories of how I wasn't good enough. I longed for it to end, and I continually thought about the only way I knew how to end it. The mind is the prison, but it can become a heaven. This I know, and this I can actually promise. It may take some work, but it is beautiful work. We experience everything through the mind, and we can train it to see the light instead of the darkness. We can learn to see what we can appreciate in this world, rather than what, it, what we feel it lacks, or what we lack. In any given moment, if I look, I can find things to appreciate, and you can practice doing this until the way you look at things changes. Gratitude becomes a powerful and real experience. So this desire to find freedom can set you on the path of liberation. We can become imprisoned by our thoughts and our stories until we find the key. Death may seem like the only way out, but this is just another story. For what do we really know about death? What I know about life is that freedom can be found. With our mind, we create the world. With our mind, we can create freedom. If I have learned anything on my journey from that night when I opened my wrists, and it has been quite a journey, it is that this heart of ours is utterly limitless. The quality of love we can have for others is boundless and knows no separation or division. It's like sunshine. 
our radiant awareness set free from what we thought the mind could be is like a bright sky, utterly free of worry and hatred. It can be like this. Please, please believe me. I look back now and I'm so thankful that I suffered as I did, for it made me seek. It made me look deep into my heart, deep into the depths, and it made me search far and wide for happiness. Happiness. I knew it couldn't be bought. I knew it didn't belong in the future. I began to search for ways it could be found here and now, the only home we will ever truly know. Suffering may still arise, but it passes too, and in a brighter space. I know this, and it no longer needs to find me or trigger an endless story and judgment about myself. Like a rainy day, I can accept it and turn towards the sea change, feel it, welcome the gifts it brings. Suffering can be my greatest teacher. Things change, people go, thoughts come and go, and suffering reminds me to be kind, always. I learn meditation. I tried just about every practice and system you can imagine. But meditation showed me the nature of mind. First it showed me I wasn't in control of thought. Then it showed me peace. Then it showed me that the mind was limitless. Where thought used to fill the mind, now thought becomes less significant, like a gust of wind in an infinite space. Eventually I wakened to the fact that in every moment a free, clear awareness is available. A bright experience free from limiting thought or separating concepts. By releasing the energy of thought to feed the energy of bright awareness, I learned to energise that experience. Thought is energy, and left unchecked it will perpetuate itself, which is why the mind can be like a washing machine on a spin cycle of self-hatred and anxiety. I know that state too well. When I first meditated, it would not stop. I had to count all the way through the breath and really notice any spaces, any pleasant sensations in the body to notice what else was happening in my experience. And like any other skill, with time, a different inner world emerged, and with that, a different outer world as well. Opening the mind, letting anxious and selfing thought drift into open space, into light, we release its energy into awareness. It showed me that peace is available, that boundless love is available. It showed me that the arisings and passings of life need not trouble me quite so much. I saw so clearly how it was my story which led me to wish to end my life. My feelings of failure, worthlessness, my absolute belief that I was unlovable, were really just thoughts. Okay, so it was true that I'd hurt people. It was true that I couldn't go without drinking for fear of fits and hallucinations. It was also true that I'd lost jobs, lovers and lost friends. It was true that everybody was worried about me and that nobody could save me. The actual situation was so different to my perception of it. My projections blinded me and insisted everyone else hated me as much as I did. As soon as I changed my habits and found help, these situations changed. Those drifting thoughts of self-hatred, those whispers of shame, the passing wishes for death began to pass into the distant sky, and other stories emerged. As I trained the mind, the mind changed. I could not only let stories drift by like clouds across the sky, but I found that I could write different stories, any stories I liked. Damage was repaired. I began to find meaning and value in life, and I fell in love with the world and with life. I realised I was not separate from life and that my suffering was the suffering of beings, not mine, not I, this suffering, but the raw material of compassion. If I'd been able, just for a moment, to, be, to experience the mind and heart that I know today, I would have set off on my path with such confidence. I wish I could lend you that mind, just for a moment. You would never doubt your own potential ever again. You would never let yourself be convinced by a thought or a story ever again. Hope would land in your heart and propel you forward step by step. Situations and circumstances might vary, but mind is constant and mind can be free from the suffering of our thinking. After walking the path for a while, I actually found a purpose, a reason for living. I had looked at this world and I had given up on it. 
I hadn't found any way of life or a job which I thought was any use. I wanted to make a difference, but I couldn't see how. But my pain, my story, was forging a new being. It was forging a, a being capable of love and compassion, a being capable of helping others to change this world, a being like you. We all have these gifts, the gift of awareness, and because we have that, we can become a Buddha. We can become a being who lives to benefit all beings, who works for the happiness of all beings. This is the most beautiful purpose and meaning I'd ever heard. Its beauty still makes me weep. This is our potential. No, it's our birthright. We are here to go through this journey so that we create change in the world. Maybe we chose this path and this suffering so that we, be we could become this beautiful energy in the world. It's nothing less than a hero's journey. Sensitive soul, please believe me. I know the world seems ridiculously fucked up, but we are entering a new age. The age of separation is ending. The age where men saw themselves as separate from each other and separate to life is ending. The age when it was possible to harm, to wage war, to rape and to kill is passing away. Don't let your precious heart, heart pass with it. The world needs beings like you. There's no achievement to be sane and well adjusted in an insane world. The mad ones, the broken, the sensitives, the dreamers, the junkies and the bright ones you seem too bright for this world. You are the change makers. You are here for a reason. You chose to suffer this suffering so that you could bring light back to this world. The age of illumination is here. It's actually here. People are waking up everywhere. And it's not just waking up to the system and to the darkness, but waking up to our light, to our non-separation, to our interconnectedness, to our bright, bright hearts and our limitless minds. So don't give up just yet, do it. But turn your mind to what is possible. What gifts could you bring to this world? What are you here to do? How are you going to bring relief to suffering souls and tear down the concepts which separate us? Tear down the systems and structures born of that separation? How will you love? How deeply, how madly will you dare to shine? All we have to do is take a step, just one. If you are suicidal, here are some practical steps that might help. First, find a friend or a support network where you are free to express these feelings. Reach out to me, if you like. Write out, write out about why you wish to die. Let it all out. How does it look written down? Every day, write a little bit about how you feel and write a list of a few things that you can find to be thankful for. This can be anything, the basics like food, water or shelter. Soon the muscle of gratitude will strengthen. Reflect on how all things change, even this. All circumstances arise and pass. All we can do is our best. Is there one thing which is causing our suffering, an addiction or a habit of mind? How would life be if this cause was removed? Understand that suffering is mind-made. So make some time to sit and watch the mind. Learn to meditate, to be in the space around thought. Reflect on how your thinking is adding to suffering. Just watch the ways it does this. Reflect on how this suffering is for other people too, that it's not just you and that it doesn't define you. Can you see this suffering as human suffering? And if so, does this change the way you feel about your suffering? Let the suffering connect you to the suffering of beings. Let your wish become for them to be free and let that include yourself. Write a little about what your deepest wish is. Is it freedom? Is it helping others to find freedom? If you knew your suffering was an initiation, what could it be an initiation into? What if you came to this earth to suffer as you're suffering now? so that you could be prepared to do your soul's mission, to help bring about change, to a shift in the shift of consciousness and change the world. You can find also on this site a hypnosis for suffering that I invite you to use freely. If this 
as I hope brings even a touch of solace, please read more. There is a wealth of inspiring writing now, and when I entered recovery, I soaked myself in it every day. I went to support groups and I studied and practiced as, my li- as if my life depended on it, because it did. Above all, please share this freely if you think it might help, and please know I write this in love and wish you change, freedom, and peace.